Hey guys, Penguin Recordings here, and in this video we're going to be doing the Team Fortress 2 benchmark once more on Windows 8.1 and Ubuntu 15.04. This time, however, we're going to be running on AMD hardware, specifically a HD5750 as requested. So this is still going to be an OpenGL3 versus Direct3D9. It's going to be set to 1000 for the FPS max value, and I will still be skipping the respawn moments that take up too much time. So let's go right ahead into the video. Alright, so starting off, we are going with the absolute minimum settings. Everything set to absolutely low or off at 1920 by 1080p. The whole video will be at 1920 by 1080p. Ubuntu 15.04 is on the left and Windows 8.1 is on the right. Once again, I am using GLX OSD for the frame rate counter on Ubuntu and MSI Afterburner for the frame rate counter on Windows. So starting off the bat, nothing special. It's just the intro videos. I will be setting FPS max to 1000 as can be seen here for both systems so that we go above the 300 frames cap here. Alright, so both are reaching above 300 frames there. So now we're going to go jump right into it. So right off the bat, both systems are able to reach 200, above 200 frames per second, but it is pretty clear that the Windows Catalyst driver is superior to the Radeon driver at least for right now. We are looking at what looks to be anywhere from 80 to 100 frames per second difference, which is pretty large. Remember, this is on a HD5750, so this card isn't exactly brand new. If you have something newer than this, this is definitely overkill, running it on low. When it really matters is when we start pumping graphics up after this. So we're seeing both stay above 120 frames per second, but it's pretty clear the AMD Catalyst drive on Windows is superior. Oh, we saw it drop down to 90 there on the Linux side. So far, the Windows side is still maintained above it. It's pretty pretty large difference here compared to the NVIDIA experience still. So I'm not using the Linux Catalyst drivers. I'm using Radeon, which is what everyone seems to say that has better performance. It's definitely superior right now to what I'd get on the Catalyst drivers, but it doesn't seem to be on par with AMD's Windows efforts yet. So it looks like AMD is still having trouble trying to increase the performance of their drivers, whether it's the open source drivers or the closed source drivers. We are definitely seeing jumps up very high when the frames stop, but then they both go back down to normal frame rates once we're in the game. Still above 200, now dropping below. We saw a momentary hang there on the Linux side. The Radeon driver seems to have the same issue that I had on Direct3D9 and the NVIDIA drivers. 190, 230, 130. We're looking at very different ranges of performance difference. The window size is always leading, but it's not always by 80 to 100 frames per second. Different. Sometimes it's only by 10, sometimes by 30, by 50, depending on what's happening in the scene and what's being rendered. Now we're going with the pyro. Let's see what some of the flame effects do once we're in the scene. Once I start burning the grenade here. So honestly, I was hoping for a miracle. Everyone was really pushing for the Radeon drivers and telling me that you're going to get absolutely amazing performance. It's definitely an improvement over the Linux Catalyst versions. I definitely support this direction they're going in. But it doesn't seem to be the miracle worker that everyone seems to be playing it out as just yet in terms of performance. Once they do get OpenGL4 support in this driver, I'm hoping for the end of the year, but realistically it may come out next year the soonest, then I will be switching over to the Radeon drivers full time for any AMD cards that I do get in the future. So the performance is pretty much consistently opposite of what we get with the NVIDIA where the lowest settings the NVIDIA drivers on Linux were above the Windows driver. On Linux side, it seems that AMD still has a stronger preference for their Windows team rather than their Linux team in terms of performance. So 130, 150, getting close to each other, then getting further apart. Right there just now you saw both sides hang momentarily so apparently the hang affects both that Direct3D9 implementation in the Windows 
Catalyst driver and the Radeon open source driver on OpenGL, interestingly enough. So we're nearing the end of the low settings benchmark here. There's not much else to say because it's pretty clear that uh, the Linux Radeon drivers are not yet just there yet. If on the lowest settings we're unable to reach the frame rates that you're getting with the Windows Catalyst driver, then it's very unlikely we're going to see the opposite happen in the maximum settings. So we are now moving to the maximum settings that I can set for this game. Everything set to absolutely high, 1920 by 1080 p Once again, Ubuntu is on the left and Windows is on the right. Same OSD frame rates for both. So considering this is an older card, I do expect the frame rates to drop considerably for both sides. Com since this is not exactly a 680, this is a HD5750, which is, I think, over 5 years old now. Still, it's pretty impressive performance that you can get. So if you're running on older AMD hardware and you're running with the Radeon drivers, you should be in pretty much good hands. So we're looking at right off the bat what looks to be about 40 frames per second difference. Windows is reaching 90 while the Radeon drivers are only 50. Oh, it dropped down to 30 there. Both systems dropped down, but the Radeon drivers seem to suffer quite a bit. Looking at 60 for a moment there difference, back down to 40, 30, 40 frames per second difference. So it's looking like uh, the when it comes to maximum settings, the performance of the Radeon drivers is similar to that of the Catalyst Linux drivers. If you've ever seen any of my past benchmark videos, usually what I would get with the Linux Catalyst drivers is half the performance on the Windows side. So comparing the Linux cat Catalyst driver with the Windows Catalyst driver, the Windows Catalyst driver would usually get twice the frame rates that the Linux Catalyst driver would be getting. And we seem to be seeing a similar case here with the Radeon drivers, if not at times less than 50 frames per second with the Radeon drivers. So when you're pushing things to the max, it looks like the Radeon drivers, at least in the case of Team Fortress 2, suffers quite a bit. Looks like the guys over at the Radeon camp need to do a bit more improvements here. I hope they focus on this in the future. It's definitely a constantly moving target. The Radeon drivers always get updated, while the Catalyst drivers take very long before we get any updates and bug fixes. So the potential for improvements is definitely far greater in the Radeon drivers, but right now we're definitely not seeing it yet. So still tw two times, okay, it went down quite a bit there, 20 frames. So far we haven't dropped into 10 yet, but 20 is pretty low, pretty bad, compared to what we're actually getting on the Windows side here. Just as a reminder, this is the absolute bleeding edge latest Radeon drivers that I can get my hands on. 10.6 development. Most people won't even be using this yet. Usually if I try to use the stable one, stable drivers, people will tell me it's not good, it's a bad idea, all the performance is in the latest. So this time I am using the latest and there really is no excuse. So hopefully in the future, the 10.6 drivers will improve for the AMD performance. I know that this is definitely much better than what the Intel iGPUs get. Just need them to put a little bit more love because we're definitely seeing consistently higher frames on the Windows side. And what what may be worse is that the dips on the Radeon Linux drivers go pretty far down. It shouldn't. It should be able to manage a steady, steady half, at least half the performance of what Windows is, because that's what we're getting with the Catalyst drivers. But many times here we're seeing it go less than half what we're getting on the Windows drivers, which is not good. Once we start burning him, yep, we're still looking at about half. Yeah, half, this is about half, maybe less than half now. So while the Radeon drivers are very good when it comes to the lowest settings, but when we push it to the max settings, we're seeing sort of a regression compared to the Linux Catalyst drivers here, which is sad to say the least. This isn't an absolute test though. Remember this is a constantly moving target and within a couple of months things may change drastically. They are getting there. This is much better than what I was getting over a year ago where I couldn't play anything at all with this. So this Radeon driver is much better right now. It's 
So 40 to 80, yeah, we're seeing the twice the frame rates on the Windows Catalyst driver here compared to the Radeon driver. As things get hectic, still twice, okay, slightly less there when it drops to 20. Thankfully, it doesn't seem to drop to the 10 frames per second or less than 20. Good. If it's able to manage at least 30 on the highest, then it's still playable. 30 and above is good. Anything below 30, as Expanded Scan Engine says, is bad for gameplay, practically makes it unplayable, and I agree with him. Anything less than 30 is practically unplayable. Alright, so we've reached the end of the benchmark. Summary time. So as it can be seen, the Linux side for the AMD drivers still leaves quite a bit to be desired in the performance area. Radeon is definitely an improvement over the Linux Catalyst version. However, it doesn't compare yet to the Windows version of AMD's Catalyst drivers. That said, uh, the performance overall is much better. So if you're using OpenGL3 games, go ahead with the Radeon drivers. But OpenGL4 is still not yet supported, so that is a problem. I also ran into a bit of an issue when running the Radeon drivers. It seems by default, system-wide, it forces a V-Sync of 60 frames per second. I don't know why they, sh they do this. It should really be application-specific, meaning applications do it themselves. You don't choose for the whole system and dictate that everything gets V-Sync. Very bad idea. Did get over that. And that's about the only issue I had with it. Everything else was pretty much okay. It ran okay with my HD5750. So that is pretty much it for this video guys, I hope it was informational or helpful to you in one way or another, and thank you for watching.